Hey YouTubers, so glad you found Drawn In. Now just so you're aware, the Drawn In episodes you see on YouTube are only scratching the surface of all that a subscription to Drawn In at davidbowmanart.com has to offer. We're talking weekly videos that go directly with the Come Follow Me curriculum, access to all the past videos. At the time of this filming, I've got some 100 plus episodes with the Book of Mormon. We've got music videos, blooper episodes, Draw with Brother Bowman episodes, PDF printouts for application at home. Subscriptions are only $4.95 a month or $49.95 for an entire year. Come be part of the Drawn In family. Now, on to your free sample YouTube episode. What say ye, Mousy? Hey friends, welcome back to Drawn In. I want to show you something. Check out this beautiful, exquisite ring. And this tiara with diamonds, emeralds, and rubies in it. And this magic wand. I can only imagine what this does. How much do you think these things are worth? Well, I'll tell you what they're worth. A buck ninety-nine down at the family dollar. <laughs> Friends, how do we determine what something is worth? How do we know what you and I are worth? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today in sections 18 through 19, a couple of my favorite sections in the whole Doctrine and Covenants because of what they teach us about the love of Jesus Christ. So have your scriptures out, ready to go. Meanwhile, Joseph and friends have finished translating the golden plates. Yay! And Moroni takes the record back with him. And now they have a manuscript, but they need to get it printed into books, right? So they can send these books out to all the world? Well, back then, printing books cost a lot of money. Who has that kind of wealth to help pay for the printing? Let's find out. Let's get... Drawn in! Now, join us from New York for Who Wants to Be a Celestial Heir? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Good evening, and welcome to Who Wants to Be a Celestial Heir? Tonight, we welcome back a man who needs no introduction, who has worked his way to the final grand prize question. From Palmyra, New York, Mr. Martin Harris. Martin, welcome. <laughs> well, thank you, Regis. It's good to be back. So, Martin, at a time like this, with so much on the line, one can only imagine what you are thinking. What are you thinking? Well, to be totally honest, Regis, I just keep wondering... How do I keep ending up on game shows? <laughs> Way to keep things light under pressure, Martin. Now, before we go to the final question, let's remind the audience at home that Martin still has all three of his lifelines left. 50-50, ask the audience, and phone a friend. Now, we move to the grand finale question. Martin, are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be, Regis. All right, then let's do it, audience. Let's go. Let's play. Who wants to be a celestial heir? Here we go. Joseph Smith needs $3,000 to print 5,000 copies of the Book of Mormon. You are his only friend with enough wealth to pay for the printing. What will you do? A. Keep things as is and don't help. B. Sell your farm to pay for the printing. C. Give Joseph another $50 and say good luck. D. Sell your farm to give $3,000 to Bobblehead Ruffian. Oh, Regis, this is a impossible question. I have spent so much time and effort on that farm. It is my love. But I also know this work is true, and... <sighs> May I use a lifeline, please? 
Certainly, which lifeline will you use? I'm going to ask the audience. Audience, what do you think I should do? Well, Martin, it looks like the audience overwhelmingly thinks you should sell your farm and pay for the printing. I thought they would. Wait a minute. Who said that I should give $3,000 to Bobblehead? Uh, that would be some boys in Idaho trying to be funny, and... Oh! Bobblehead. I'd like to use another lifeline, Regis. 50-50, please. Okay, one of these two remaining answers is the correct answer. Regis, I would like to use my third and last lifeline, phone a friend. Okay, Martin, who would you like to call? I guess I will call my wife. Hello, Lucy Harris. This is Regis from Who Wants to Be a Celestial Heir. Your husband, Martin, is on the show right now. He has a question for you. Yeah, what has my husband got himself into this time? Okay, Mrs. Harris, here he is. Martin, your time starts now. Uh, hi, dear. Um, Joseph Smith needs $3,000 to pay for the printing of the Book of Mormon. Um, should I sell our farm? to pay for that printing? What? Martin Harris, how dare you even consider the thought of selling our farm to give money to that two-bit card artist Joseph Smith? What has gotten into your head? Why, I swear, if you sell our farm, man, I'm going to just go and... Well, uh, Martin, um, sometimes 30 seconds, uh, just can't come soon enough. <laughs> Made a decision. Oh, can I have one more ask a friend? Well, that was painful on the ears. Yes, you may have one more, Martin. Good, because I'd like to ask the Lord. Perhaps I could receive a revelation regarding His will for me. Whew. What a tough choice Martin has to make. What a sacrifice. Did you know that $3,000 back then would be over $300,000 in today's money? Would you be willing to sacrifice that to print copies of the Book of Mormon? Well, it all depends on which you see as having more worth. The farm or the Book of Mormon? Well, Martin asked for a uh, phone a friend and that will be section 19 is the revelation that the Lord gives to Martin. But first, we need to check out section 18. Section 18 is another revelation given to Oliver Cowdery while they were translating the plates. Verse 1. Now behold, because of the thing which you, my servant Oliver Cowdery, have desired to know of me, I give unto you these words. There's that word again, guys. Desire. Oliver wanted revelation, and he got an incredible revelation. you got to read the whole section on your own. And then the Lord tells Oliver, I command all men everywhere to repent. Now friends, if we're not careful, we might envision a drill sergeant commanding us to repent and feel horrible for something, and it's this undesirable thing. I love how President Nelson has cleared up the definition of repent for us. He said, when we choose to repent, we choose to change. We allow the Savior to transform us into the best version of ourselves. We choose to become more like Jesus Christ. So, this command might be more positively stated, I command all men everywhere to change in happy ways. Now, why is the Lord commanding us to change? Well. That leads us to today's... Power Verse! 
All right, you guys, this is a classic. You need to mark it, put Christmas lights on it. Here it goes, read it with me. <sighs> Remember, the worth of souls is great in the sight of God. Love this verse. So, why do you have such great worth in the eyes of God? Doesn't God know all of our sins and weaknesses? Well, back to the question, what determines worth? Let me suggest five different things. Determining worth, or in this case, determining your worth. Number one, how unique is it? Friends, do you realize that there is not one single person that has ever lived that is like another person? Different talents, different abilities, different looks, different personalities, every single person is absolutely unique. <laughs> so in this case, you are one of a kind. Number two, what can it do? <laughs> I think a better question is, what can't you do? All throughout history, people have been doing the impossible, defying the odds, being incredible for good, and so can you. By the way, if you want a really inspiring movie to watch with your family, this documentary called Moly is incredible. It's on Amazon Prime, it's a rags to riches, and then back to rags so that others can have riches story. Check it out. Number three, how long does it last? Do you realize that all the stars and galaxies in the universe that we think are so permanent and everlasting actually have an end? They will die out, and yet you and I are eternal. We have no end. Number four, what can it become? Well, for you and me, we better draw this one out. Okay, how many of you have ever had a puppy before? Raise your hand. Oh, aren't they so cute? Okay, here's Genetics 101, kids. What does that puppy eventually become? Say it on the count of three all together. One, two, three. Exactly right. The puppy becomes a dog, of course. It doesn't stay a puppy forever. All right, let's do another one. How many of you have ever had a kitten? Oh, my daughters love kittens, especially Lydia. So, what does this kitten eventually become? <laughs> Think you got it? On the count of three, say it out loud. One, two, three. A cat. Unfortunately. All right, let's do one more. If you are a child of heavenly parents, what will you eventually become? Well, it's simple. You become what your parents are. You become heavenly parents someday yourselves. You have that in your genetic makeup. You are a child of God and you have Godhood in your destiny. So what can it become? President Thomas S. Monson once said that the worth of a soul is its capacity to become a God. And that is a truer than true truth. And lastly, worth is determined by what one is willing to pay for it. And in the case of you and me, Jesus Christ tells us himself in words that are so personal in these sections what he paid for us. Learn of me and listen to my words. Walk in the meekness of my spirit and you shall have peace in me. I am Jesus Christ. I came by the will of the Father and I do His will. For behold, the Lord your Redeemer suffered death in the flesh, 
Wherefore he suffered the pain of all men, that all men might repent and come unto him. For behold, I, God, have suffered these things for all, that they might not suffer if they would repent. Which suffering caused myself, even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain, and to bleed at every pore, and to suffer both body and spirit, and would that I might not drink the bitter cup and shrink. Nevertheless, glory be to the Father, and I partook and finished my preparations unto the children of men. And how great is his joy in the soul that repenteth. Wherefore you are called to cry repentance unto this people. And if it so be that you should labor all your days in crying repentance unto this people, and bring, save it be one soul unto me, how great shall be your joy with him or her in the kingdom of my Father. As the leader over the youth, especially in our ward, we've had quite a lot of success with missionary work. The youth have been so willing to share their testimonies with others. Well, my mom died when I was eight. My dad, I never met him. After my mom died, my aunt kind of took care of us, probably till like pretty much freshman year. And then after that, she did stuff that got her locked up for two years. I started um, getting involved in stuff like sports, you know, music. I would volunteer just because I didn't want to be home. Um, our state president asked us to pray about someone they could help. And so our family tried to do that, and we got together and prayed, and each of the kids individually prayed about it too. And that next day, um, Jessica went to school, and uh, she had been talking to Lupe before, and just decided to ask her if she wanted to listen to the missionary discussions. At first, when I just asked her, the reason why I did is because I felt the spirit, and I knew that that's something that Heavenly Father had in plan for her. So. I asked her and then she came and to my house. After she started coming to my house more, it was like I loved her and I wanted her to have the happiness and I really cared about her and I really wanted her to be baptized and to, to feel it. And I remember I kept going to Mutual and then I started going to church. And I remember, you know, sitting at church, you know, Sundays I'd be like, well, they, you know, I would look around and be like, Everybody looks so happy, you know, like there's no problems or anything. I guess it's just the gospel in their life. Something that I didn't have at home, you know. When she went up to Lupe to ask her, she wasn't trying to do something that someone told her to do. She really wanted to share something that was inside of her with a friend. And I think that's why Lupe responded, because she knew it was sincere. When the missionaries taught me about the atonement, they kind of explained what it meant. Cause I didn't, I, I didn't have no idea what it meant, you know, it was just like, okay, it's just a word. But then they explain how Jesus Christ goes through all your pain, you know. Because of the stuff I was going through at the moment, it, I think it hit me more. It's like, oh, okay, he, he knows what I'm going through. He knows how I'm feeling right now. It kind of helped me know that Jesus Christ was there for me. I feel like everybody cares about you. It's not just it's not it's not just the people that know you. We're a family. Her ward loves her more than anyone. It's sort of a ripple effect that they just want to keep doing it because they see the joy not only in their lives but in the lives that they've touched through sharing the gospel. I don't know, it's hard to explain, you know. 
It feels like home. I, if I could say that, it feels like home, you know? Something I, I was looking for. I found it. <laughs> love what verse 16 adds, that if you feel good bringing one soul into Christ, like that video we just watched with Lupe, I love that video, then how much greater will your joy be if you should bring many souls unto Christ, if you devote your life to serving and helping others repent and change. So what's the number one tool the Lord has given us in these days to bring people to the Savior? You guessed it. Ding, 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 ding. The Book of Mormon. So my friends, we have now come full circle back to Martin Harris's grand prize question. Will Martin Harris sacrifice the better part of his entire farm to pay for the printing of the Book of Mormon? He asked for a phone a friend, a revelation from the Lord, we just learned in section 19 how much the Lord was willing to sacrifice for him, for all of us, through the atonement. Can Martin give his own sacrifice back to the Lord? Verse 26, the Lord tells Martin Harris, And again I command thee, that thou shalt not covet thine own property, but impart it freely to the printing of the Book of Mormon, which contains the truth and the Word of God. But the Lord also gives another blessing if he chooses to pay for the printing of the Book of Mormon. In verse 38, the Lord said he will pour out his Spirit upon Martin, and great will be his blessing, yea, even more than if you should obtain treasures of the earth. So which one is of more worth? What will Martin choose? Welcome back, everybody, to Who Wants to Be a Celestial Heir? We are here with Martin Harris, who's about to make one of the biggest decisions of his life. Martin, have you made your choice? Yes, I have, Regis. As much as I love my farm, I know the work of the Lord comes first, and I will be blessed. So my answer is B. Sell my farm to pay for the printing of the Book of Mormon. Is that your final answer, Martin? Yes. Final answer. Well, you took a gamble. And? Well, my friends, it's great to be with you. So, what? You want to see how that ended? Well, what do you think? Did Martin make the right choice? You bet he did. And he doesn't need the fanfare and the applause and the money showering down and the cameras. He just needs that peace of conscience that he sacrificed his will for God. And in the end, <laughs> that's all that matters. Remember the name of the game. Who wants to be a celestial heir? Choosing the things of most worth over the temporary things is part of achieving that celestial glory. All right. I'm not gonna do a, that was then, this is now for you today, because I want you as a family to come up with your own applications of these principles, okay? All right, until next time, keep getting drawn into your scriptures. Bye-bye. Sell my farm, I'm alarmed, that's what it takes to print the Book of Mormon. But what has more worth, God's word or dirt? Is it worth being a poor man? Jesus sacrificed his life so we could all repent. Your worth is great, so don't hesitate to keep his commandments.